the DC motor can be classified as a series motor and a shunt motor. It is based on the connection of field windings with the armature windings. If they are connected in series, then the motor is called as series motor and if they are connected in parallel, the motor is called as shunt motor. We discussed about the characteristics of shunt motor in the previous video. In this video, let us understand the characteristics of a series motor. As in the case of a shunt motor, we have three major characteristics of series motor. They are torque armature current characteristics, speed armature current characteristics and speed torque characteristics. Let's look at the first one. In series motor, the field winding and armature windings are connected in series. The field winding has very less resistance. So, the same amount of the current flows through the armature and the field windings. As the load on the motor increases, the armature current will increase. As the same current passes through the field winding, the flux also increases with the armature current. Now, coming to the characteristics. We know that the armature torque Ta is proportional to the product of flux and current that is phi into Ia. But from our discussion earlier, we know that flux phi is dependent on the armature current. So we can say that flux is proportional to armature current that is phi proportional to Ia. By this, torque current relationship will become Ta proportional to Ia into Ia. Phi is replaced by Ia here. So, the armature torque is directly proportional to the square of armature current until a particular point. This relation is represented on the graph as parabolic curve. After a certain time, the motor will reach a point called magnetic saturation. This means even if we increase the current passing through the field winding, the magnetic flux remains constant. It will not increase with current after this point. So, after the motor reaches magnetic saturation, the flux will become independent of armature current. Now, the torque will be proportional to only armature current and not the square of it. So, we get a straight line in the graph after the saturation point. We can also see that graph of shaft torque versus armature current. The values will be lesser than the armature torque. The difference between armature torque and the shaft torque is the loss torque as we see in the graph. So, we can conclude that if we require large starting torque to lift or move heavy masses like we see in the case of elevators, locomotives, hoists, etc., the series motors are ideal. That's about torque current characteristics of series motor. Now, let's move on to speed armature current characteristics. Looking back at the equation for speed, we have the speed n being proportional to eb by phi that's back emf by flux. But the variation of back emf eb is very less for different loads so it can be treated as a constant. Therefore we have speed as inversely proportional to magnetic flux. As we discussed earlier, the flux is dependent on the armature current in a series motor. So, speed will be inversely proportional to the armature current. As the armature current increases, the speed of the motor will decrease. This relation is shown in the graph. When we have a case where we have heavy load on the motor, there will be large armature current. So, in this case, as the current is large, speed of the motor will be very less. And it seems logical because on heavy loads, motor will run at less speeds in practice. Once we disengage or take off the load on the motor, the armature current decreases drastically and in turn, the speed will become dangerously high to an extent that it may damage the motor and other parts linked with it. 
So, the series motor should always be started with some mechanical load on it. Else, we run a risk of damaging the motor and other parts. This is about speed current characteristics of a series motor. Now, let's move on to the last characteristics of the series motor, that is speed torque characteristics. Looking at the graph, we can interpret that as the torque increases, speed of the motor decreases. Because as the torque increase, the armature current will increase and in turn increases the magnetic flux. But we have a relation between flux and speed. They are inversely proportional. This means the speed will decrease with the increase in flux. So, at low torque, speed of the motor is high. That's about the speed torque characteristics and also the end of our discussion on the characteristics of a series motor. Summing up, we have three characteristics of series motor. Number one, torque current characteristics which says series motor is the best choice to lift or move heavy loads quickly. And then we have speed current characteristics which says series motor should always be started with some mechanical load. Else it will reach very high speed and damage the motor. At last we have speed torque characteristics which says speed decreases with increasing torque. So these are the characteristics of DC series motor.